Good afternoon, everyone. So we are back with part two of this awesome series where Lisha is going to share her journey um, in meeting Christu and how our father has shaped and molded her to become the wife that she is to him today um, and for the covenant day, how he, he shaped her. So thank you, Lisha. We are very excited to hear what our father wants to share through you. Thank you. I'm very uh, excited also to teach a bit or to bring a bit of this part of my life that I haven't shared um, on a social platform. And I think it's so important that we look at all of these details in my story and in Krista's story and in each one of your stories. It is different and it is unique. And we need to look at, um, you know, how the, far, the process of what the father takes you through. Uh, in order to prepare. So my story is definitely very different from Krista's story, but there are some similarity, similar, similarities um, in it. I had a, I, okay, you, a lot of you know my, my uh, history, but I had a very set apart life, a very outside of the system, um, never really had a lot of friends never really went to uh you know high school never had a matric farewell never had a lot of uh, boyfriends in high school or relationships I was kept pure and I was kept safe and I was kept hidden for a long time of my life and um I had a big uh, desire to be pure but I also had a lot of pride in my purity and um and that was something that the lord had to deeply work with me for the for the deep pride that i had in how perfect and pure and everything perfect i was in my life um so when i went to university i you know i had a, a deep void within my heart from uh, being alone you know in homeschooling not having a lot of friends and i did concentrate a lot on my studies but I also had I think two or three short short-term relationships in in university where it definitely wasn't my husband and it definitely um it wasn't serious at all it was just more like friendships and people that the Lord sent over my path that helped me in those seasons but as I grew deeper with the Lord and as he started speaking to me and um, revealing himself to me, himself to me, I got very, very, very serious about dating and about only dating for marriage and a covenant relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, very, 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 very serious. So I think a main thing in your journey to to meet your wife or to meet your husband is to set the Lord first above anything else. Do not seek after love. Do not seek after a person that will, you know be there for you or bring you flowers or, you know, this is all things of the flesh. It's all things of the world. The more you seek the Lord, the more he gives you his desires and the more he gives you a desire to be pure, a desire to be kept aside, a desire to prepare, prepare yourself. yourself for that person, for marriage. And so you so your focus is then preparing yourself instead of seeking. Yeah. To, your focus changes from um, your. It would be really nice to have a boyfriend. Uh, that doesn't become a need at all anymore, and the only need you have is your bridegroom. Mm -hmm. And so, my advice for people that are very young, still in university, honestly, you are very, very young, and you don't think you're young now. You think you are all knowing, <laughs> and you think you know everything you need to know which is fine, but you do not know everything you need to know. And it would be the best for you to seek the Lord for a season only. It would be best for you to not be in too many relationships because you want to find your husband. Really set it aside for when the Lord declares that this is your husband or your wife. We will share that with our testimony. Yeah, we're going to share that with our testimony. Our testimony is very deep. It's very detailed. And I really believe it is extremely important for the body to hear. We've wanted to record the testimony for a long time. And we just weren't in a season of um, 
quietness that like we are in now so i believe this is the time to record it and i i do believe it's very important to hear for the body mm -hmm. so at in university i was uh focused on the lord um i had a few relationships but yeah it was not really uh, out of his hand and there was a season where i started really really um you know being set aside uh, in the next level, and I had a wonderful uh, spiritual mother in Potchefstroom that I love with all of my heart that the Lord gave me in that season, and I just I loved uh, walking that that path of preparing for my husband with her. And um, in that season, I was also involved in a lot of churches, a lot of ministries, a lot of just a in a lot uh, involved in a lot of ministry activity I had like a schedule every week of my schedule with ministry was more full than my study schedule and I studied pharmacy to give you an idea I was very involved and I just empty poured my life into seeking the Lord and seeking and understanding who he is and you know being around fellowship with, with people who loved him yeah. um so I had this one group of people that I was involved with and my spiritual mother was a part of that group. And, and one day at a, um, at a weekend camp, we had, a, we had some of these weekend camps that you, you know, just visit teachings and it was very, very special uh, spiritual growth in that time of my life. And as you all know me, I'm very serious. So I have always for my whole life been very serious and also with, uh, asking the Lord in prayer for certain things, I'm extremely serious about it, and I don't, uh, you know, I don't make jokes. I don't, <laughs> I don't do things if it's not important. I only really searched after the deep things of the Lord, and so I prayed with my spiritual mother, and I prayed a prayer that changed the course of my life drastically. Sure. And this was about. Eight years ago, before I met Krista, this prayer happened eight years before that moment. So um, I sat with her and I had this desire to ask the Lord to uh, come into agreement with me, to make a covenant with me regarding my husband. Because I understood the importance of calling. I understood that I was... Um, you know, called for ministry and how important my husband would be in this role. Yeah. So I, I was very bold and I, I asked the Lord, Father, or I made a covenant that day with the Lord, with my spiritual mother. And I told him, Lord, I want to make a covenant with you today that I'm not going to marry a person if you do not provide the ring. Mm -hmm. uh, the the ring for marriage, the covenant, because I wanted it to be a godly covenant. I did not want it to be an earthly covenant. Mm -hmm. And worth saying this, please, I don't want everybody to make a covenant with the Lord so that the Lord will provide the ring. Um, this was really something very personal and it was something very deep in my heart. It was something I never mentioned to anybody my whole life. I never mentioned this to any person. It was something between me and God that I carried in my heart, that I trusted him for, that I sought him for, that I believed that he heard that prayer, he heard that covenant, and it was a deep, honest, honest, seeking the Lord moment for me. Okay, so I don't want everybody to make a covenant with the Lord that he will provide the ring for your marriage and base it on, on that. I just... I'm just explaining my story and what the father taught me in this process. Mm -hmm. um, so I I told him I'm going to be set apart and I was ready for marriage at that time. I thought I was ready. You know, I made this covenant. It's going to take a month and then my husband will be there. <laughs> he will provide the ring and yeah. we'll get married. That, that was what I thought it would be. Don't forget the white horse. Yeah, the, he would come on a white horse, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> And I even went that far to ask the Lord to uh, this man that he prepares, this this husband of mine. I was on fire. So obviously I would pray this. And I told the Lord, be careful what you ask for and be careful what you pray because it's vows. So that's why I'm saying, please, please be careful for what you ask. Because the enemy also knows what you ask. 
Um, and and there's a big question mark in people on why does the Lord uh, confirm a relationship and then it's not your husband and it's not your wife? It doesn't make sense because he had confirmation on all of those relationships. I had confirmation on, on the relationships that I was in that it was, you know, mm-hmm. of the Lord. And there's a lot of answers to that question that we'll get into. But um, I also asked the father and I told him, this man that you prepare for me, I want him to come to me and I want him to tell me, listen, the Lord told me that you are my wife and I want to marry you. And we would instantly be in a covenant relationship and we would get married and it would be wholly set apart. And this thing around holiness and purity was very important to me. I was very pure my whole life. I never really, you know, I was pure. So any case, that was what I asked the father. And just after that covenant, there was a guy coming into my life and he met me on a mountain and he told me, oh, listen, the Lord told me, you're my wife. On the third night, we were on a hiking trip. Sure. And I was like, oh, wow, this is what I asked the Lord. This is my <laughs> husband, obviously. You know, there's confirmation and there's scripture and there's dream. So it must be this. Mm. And the soul has a lot of issues and a lot of things hidden in your heart the Lord will speak to the idol that is within your heart. So he will speak to the idol that you're carrying in your heart. And he takes you on a process to break down the idols that you have set up on your heart, in your heart, that is more important than him. Even if you think he is most important in your life, usually that idol is very strong in your heart. Mm -hmm. And I was in a very quick relationship with this guy that, you know, thought the Lord told him I'm his wife. And you see, you're starting to see what the enemy is busy up to. You know, he's a really nice guy. I have nothing against the the person. I'm just explaining my story. Mm -hmm. And um, after two months, I think, I really started feeling peace about the relationship the character wasn't there the fruit wasn't there it wasn't godly it wasn't honoring the lord you know it was just um it really wasn't a, a relationship that i would say uh reflects the the true character of the father so i prayed a lot over it um i stepped out of the relationship and I started just seeking the Lord for this person that he has promised to give me. Mm. And, um, and I went into a time of, of, I've shared this a lot of just focusing on my calling and what the Lord wanted me to do in healing the nations and focusing on my studies and focusing on um, what he has called me for. And in that time I made another uh, guy and this person was in my life for about six years, I think. We were basically in a relationship for six years. And um, in the beginning, we were just friends, ministering together, praying together, you know, really just seeking the Lord together. And it involved evolved into a relationship. But we were very good friends. It was more like a friendship than a, a covenant relationship. And I still had these needs and these wants within my heart of the Lord, uh, you know, giving me somebody who can be with me in ministry. The Lord um, providing a husband for me who is strong enough for me because I'm a very strong person. I have a very strong (laughs) will. (laughs) I love it through it. (laughs) <laughs> I have a very forerunner type of personality so I need somebody who can keep up with me who's strong enough in ministry to you know to walk this type of life with me and um, the more the, this relationship in the first year wasn't very healthy um, he was very unsure I got a lot of rejection through it although I was extremely pure and seeking the Lord's heart I got a lot of rejection out of that relationship and I got a lot more hurt within that relationship than anything in my life that relationship really broke me Mm -hmm. um and uh, after this person also had a brain tumor and you know I had this whole journey with him (laughs) and I really trusted that the Lord would restore him because in the beginning of our relationship I 
absolutely um thought that I knew that the Lord said this is my husband and I had so many prophetic dreams and I had so many prophetic word I could I, I think I had like four journals full of word and dreams and visions that I had so I come I really really believe that this was um the person that the Lord prepared for me mm. and after his brain surgery he really struggled with his health and with his brain and it was a very unhealthy relationship it was very abusive and I don't want to go into the details of it not I mean not physically abusive but emotionally in words and things that was done and it was just not um at all what I thought mm -hmm. and I all wrote it towards you know he's struggling with his brain health he'll get healthy again his brain will recover and everything will be fine but um and and I felt like the Lord pressed the three years on my heart to give grace for the relationship for three years until it is healed and things started to heal and things started to you know get get to a place of of um, who he was uh, before he he went through that process but still it was not really um what I wanted and what I expected uh, my husband to to be and what I needed in a husband. Um, but I definitely was, I, I, I truly loved him very, very deeply and I truly cared for him. So it was very difficult for me to get out, out of that situation and out of this relationship in my life. Mm -hmm. um, it was definitely, you know, his seven year relationship was his diffi most difficult thing to let go of. And for, for sure, this relationship was the most difficult for me to let go of. Uh, because I thought I was ready for marriage. I thought, you know, that we would get married very quickly because the Lord said all of these things. How can we not get married if the Lord said all of these things are over us? And in the process, I had to deal with a lot of rejection, a lot of hurt, a lot of rejection from other people as well. Um, I really had to deal with past hurts and rejection that the Lord allowed me again to, to go through just in like in his story mm. but um yes he, he was a very good friend to me um I think if we, if I can sum it up to, into something I think we were meant to be friends more than we were meant to be uh a covenant in a covenant marriage okay. and and there, there was the time uh, uh the time came where he asked me to marry him and uh <laughs> That was very difficult for me also because I was engaged to him. Although in my heart, I really constantly felt unpeace. Um, I didn't feel peace. I didn't feel, I felt so unsure of the relationship. It was a big struggle for me and I didn't get all of the answers from the Lord. And one day I sat with the Lord and I asked him again, just explain to me, you know, I needed to understand what am I going through? Why do I have confirmation on this relationship? And I still don't have peace. It's still not carrying the fruit, fruit that I desire it to, it to carry. And the Lord just put me in a place where he told me, you are not going to understand everything that happens in your life and you need to make peace with it. Sure. Um, my re my big redemptive gift is is uh, the gift of giver, and the gift of giver really struggles to understand. If you look at Job, he had the same thing. You know, he asked the Lord when he went through all of that. I just want to understand what is your <laughs> strategy in this. <laughs> and then the Lord told him, "Do you understand me?" You know, like all of those questions that the Lord asked Job. You know, who who laid the foundations? Do you have any idea who this God is that you're serving? And he even didn't answer Job. Job had to make peace with this is the work of the Lord, and I need to not control everything and control my understanding in the process so all I can say out of that relationship is that um, I desired for more I desired for more of a covenant relationship more of a relationship of depth with the Lord and to truly bear fruit of the kingdom mm -hmm. and so there was a time after our engagement um and the, this is also a big story, the engagement, but I don't think in going, I don't feel like going into detail of it. But there was a time afterwards where 
he again got very sick and it was like a, a repeating cycle in his life and uh, I sat with the Lord and I was completely at a place of emptiness and brokenness and just I was just done with it mm -hmm. and I told the Lord I cannot continue like this I cannot continue year after year after year after year uh, in the same cycle in the same process going through this emotional um uh, roller, coaster. roller coaster yeah there's so many words for it mm -hmm. um constantly just battling this and I'm, I'm not seeing any change I'm not seeing any fruit take place and I didn't feel loved I didn't feel appreciated I didn't feel worthy in that relationship so I really sought the Lord in should I leave this person because I had such a big belief system that this was my husband Mm -hmm. um, so I had to, to seek him and I went into a time of fasting and into a time of prayer and into a time of completely just, you know, getting out of the situation and praying for the Lord's will to be done. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spoke to me a few times and he, you know, he showed me uh, a lot of things. And one day he spoke to me and he gave me a promise of a husband. And he told me, if you do not exit this relationship, you will sacrifice your calling. Sure. You're going to sacrifice your calling and you will die in your soul. Mm -hmm. So I had to make a decision in exiting the, the relationship and it was the hardest thing that I ever had to do in my life. Until today, it was the hardest thing that I ever had to do because my belief system of that person being my husband was so strong. And my love for that person was also very strong over, you know, years of of that uh, relationship. And so I was in full-time ministry, swamped with conferences, swamped with people. Nobody knew about this with me being in ministry. Nobody really knew what I was going through in my personal life. Mm -hmm. um, I think when you are in that forefront of ministry it's really difficult to share your heart with people mm -hmm. you know because you just have to deal with with them constantly so I also threw myself into ministry to avoid uh dealing with the pain that I had mm -hmm. in that uh, season I could have easily uh you know stepped out of ministry for a season and just got healing but for me being busy it helped me to cope with the amount of pain <laughs> that I had sure. from that traumatic uh, um, time mm -hmm. and after you know after I stepped out of the relationship it was very hard for me to to get complete healing and it actually took me two years to really get healing sure. and I also want to encourage people if you had a situation like this and you really have you, you know Trust the Lord's timing that he will only send you your husband when you are completely healed. This is so true. And he's not going to send your husband to you in the first month, in the in the first week. He, mm -hmm. will, he will help you to heal so that you are in a healed relationship with your husband. Absolutely. Um, and, in, and in that time, you know, I was just working through a lot of rejection um from from that and this was different to rejection that I had as a kid or rejection that I had um you know when I was very sick and and out of school this was very very deep rejection and I had to restore in who I was who the Lord said I was what I was called to do and I really believe that this was one of the biggest days that I had to uh, go yeah. through in my in my whole life. The Lord really tested me on on this relationship. I also think and, I want to add, sorry, Alicia, with what you are saying, that both of you had this point in your life where you had to make, because Christo also referred to uh, that it was the most difficult decision of his life but both of you had the choice between being obedient to God or continuing to be in a relationship 
that you have this constant um, battle that you know it's not the relationship that you're supposed to be in. And I just think this is something that should encourage everyone that's listening to this as well, that it doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but Abba Father rewards obedience as well. And if you think of the bigger picture, if you miss your calling, that is much worse than the decision or the pain you had to go through in making that decision out of obedience. Amen. Yes, absolutely. And I also think that the fruit that the relationship bears is very, very important. Mm. If the Lord said it is your husband, but the relationship is not bearing godly fruit, then the relationship is not good. And then the, the Lord will not allow that to happen. Yeah. You know, I also think that, you know, he tasted this this person and he tasted this season. And if he had made the right decisions and the right choices, and if he had honored me and if he had treated me with good fruit, then and chose to work on his character, seek after God's face diligently, mm -hmm. allow God to work in his heart, etc., then it might have worked differently. And that's also to my previous testimony. Um what God showed me is the woman is willing to accept the cup, mm -hmm. which has a deeper meaning. When you accept the cup, um, that's the parable where um, the woman came to Yeshua and she said, can I sit at uh, the right hand of the father? Or can my, my son sit at the right hand of the father? And then he said, well, you don't understand the weight of the question you're asking right now, <laughs> because it's a very difficult cup to be able to, uh, to be uh, <laughs> counted worthy to sit at the right hand mm -hmm. and what it essentially means are you willing to walk out uh, the pruning and the character building process that God wants to take you through to prepare you for a go godly marriage or not yeah. and if the person is willing to walk that out then yes, God will bestow his blessing upon that marriage and take you into the uh, marriage covenant. But mm -hmm. like I said, in, in both our situations, God did not allow it to go into the marriage covenant because both weren't um, willing to drink the cup, mm -hmm. the covenant cup. Yeah, that's true. Very true. Oh, you have to taste fruits. You cannot say... The Lord said, this is my husband, so I'm going to deal with all of his junk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not work. It doesn't work like that. If he does not bear fruit, then cut it off. Mm -hmm. It is such a hard word. Mm -hmm. But if that person is meant for you, then the Lord will return him to you when he is healed when he does bear fruit, when he is seated within the Lord first. Perfect. If that person is hurting you out of his own hurt, please cut it off mm. because that is not the heart of the Father. Mm. Do not hold onto something because you believe this is what the Lord has said if yes. it is not godly. And please, just to add on that, like Paul says in 1 Corinthians 7, how do you, O wife, or you, O husband, know whether you will change your wife or husband. It's not in our power to change anybody. Only God can change the heart yeah. of man. Yeah, well, so that's... please, test the fruit. If the fruit does not change, that person won't change because of you. Mm -hmm. They'll only change if they are willing to accept the cup. <laughs> that was also a very big um, problem that I had because I believe that he's going to change. Mm -hmm. I constantly, uh, trusted the Lord that he will change and the situation will change. And I trusted that the Lord will do a work within him and, and make him change. And I couldn't, I couldn't change him. Even though I, I tried to love him to change, it just did not be fruit. It's called Mother Teresa dating relationship. I've got enough <laughs> love for the both of us. <laughs> but there's no space for romance in that relationship. There's yeah. no space for true intimacy in that type of relationship. So what happened is I ended up pouring all of my love, all of my all of me into this relationship mm -hmm. and our nothing was returned and I was completely empty and it was very unhealthy. 
<laughs> very, very, very unhealthy. So I started, I exited the relationship and I just focused on my calling ministry. And um, it was very difficult because he got married uh, just a few months, I think, after we broke up to a different girl. And for me, that was very difficult to process because we were in a six year relationship. You know, I thought he would be married in the first year and it didn't happen. And how could the Lord now? you know, allow this, allow him getting married. Um, you know, it, it was very difficult for me to process. And I needed to get deep healing, deep, deep, deep healing. Um, and in that time, I was in a relationship with someone who was a bit older than me, and it was a really good friend again. And the Lord did send that person in my life. And he was such a good a person to just help me get healing. And he was just a uh, very, um, uh, what's understand? Supportive. Supportive, sorry. <laughs> he was just very supportive of my life and my ministry and my business. And it was a very, it was good, but also definitely not my husband. And I knew I had unpeace about it the whole time. So this can now go on for a long time, but I just want to get to the point of, of the story. Uh, I was now almost in my seventh year. I think I was in my seventh year of this covenant that I had with the Lord. And all of you know the story that me sh that I shared with Lucia about the seven years of the pill. And the seven years of the pill was had a lot to do with this uh, molding and forming of my character in these relationships. Yeah. And I got very frustrated with the Lord. And I, I was very... Um, angry i had a godly anger towards the father and i was like lord i gave my life to you <laughs> my whole life have i given to you since i was a little girl i've kept myself pure i'm pure and i had so many pride in that purity i didn't even know that i had pride in my own purity but i did and I was so frustrated with the Lord because I was keeping up to my part of the deal, but he wasn't keeping up to his part of the deal. And I was just crying out to him and asking him, where is my husband? Where is the person that you have prepared for me? And I was at a place of breaking. Everybody around me in that stage, mm -hmm. very close to me would know it was one of the most difficult seasons that I had to go through. And I was really seeking the Lord with everything in me and telling him I cannot continue alone on this journey I need somebody to help me I had too much responsibility on my shoulders um, you know I really really needed my husband to enter into the next season of my life uh, I cannot state how how serious this was for me I uh, went to Israel prayed in Israel about my husband and came back and prayed here and went to Israel again and wept at the weeping wall wailing, wailing wall the <laughs> same difference no, it, was, it was a weeping wall you know <laughs> I wept for days at the Lord's feet and really cried out out of the deepest parts of my being cried out to the Lord and told him I need my husband i don't need a, a boyfriend a boyfriend <laughs> i don't need um you know somebody i need the person that can walk this calling with me that mm. you have prepared to this calling with me that is able that, that the perfect fit the one that is made for me before the foundations of the earth this is the person that i cried out to and I, you know, I've been strong for a lot of years on my own in that time and did a lot of things. And at this stage, it was, it just came to a point where I knew I need to now have my husband for the next season. And um, after I returned from Israel, again, there was such a deep process in prayer and in preparing my heart. And I went to visit Sarah, Jubilee, and Rion at their farm in Namibia. And Namibia for me is a very, very special place. It is where it's like the womb in the spirit, if I can just say it in short. And the Lord has done amazing things in Namibia. And their farm is on the east gate of Namibia, which is also a very, very specific place in the spirit. And I went to visit them and I just, it felt like we prayed for two weeks. And we just cried and prayed for two weeks <laughs> on 
me praying for and trusting the Lord for my husband and, and they were different. Uh, they trusted the Lord for different things, but we were in a process of just being together in their house and just praying day after day, after day, after day, after day, hours and hours in prayer. And so why am I telling this to you is that all things don't just come easy. Mm -hmm. and most of the things that the lord has prepared for you it is a deep uh, struggle and it's a deep process of seeking the lord because he wants to taste your faithfulness he wants to taste your heart mm -hmm. and he wants it's like the process abram had to go through with isaac and with uh, um, ishmael ishmael and isaac all, I've seen this every time. There's always going to be a testing in your life between Ishmael and Isaac. Who is Ishmael and who is Isaac? Mm. Um, Isaac is the promised son, the, the promise of the Lord. And Ishmael is the flesh. Uh, and sometimes Ishmael looks like the promise of the Lord. Mm. Most of the time. You know, there's also some scripture that you get on Ishmael's. There's some uh, dreams that you have on an Ishmael. There's some word that you get on an Ishmael. Everything seems right, but it is the self. It is the own will to, to you know, get that promise. Where Isaac truly is, the only the hand of God can bring an Isaac. Mm -hmm. And so we were in a very deep prayer uh, session, season, and um, in this time where I was set apart in Namibia, uh, I really was deeply, deeply broken about how am I going to continue with everything I need to do with the farm and with the factory and with the ministry and with the calling on, on everything without my husband. Mm -hmm. And um, that was also the seventh, Am I correct? The seventh of January. That when I contacted to you. Yes. yes, exactly seven years after. So, I so the seventh of January, uh, Christo sent me a message. The first message that he sent me. Twenty twenty two. Twenty. Oh, sorry. Twenty three. <laughs> and he sent me a message regarding you know me and Sarah was just finishing up a prayer session and. <laughs> It was like nine o'clock at night. We just had, a, I think, a three-hour prayer session or something. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, I was just quickly going through my messages before going to bed. And obviously, you go through the first ones first. And um, his message came up, and I just quickly answered him like I do every other normal person out there who sends me messages daily. It's not. It was not like a, whoa, this is your husband moment. It's just like this guy is asking for teaching uh, on oil. So I send him the link to my YouTube channel, to, you know, my blogs and everything. And I just told him, listen, you can go and listen to all of the teachings on these platforms. If you have any questions, you can let me know. And I left it there and nothing miraculously happened. Mm -hmm. And um, I, can, I, I returned to, but I, what I want to say is that the Lord already started giving the answer to my prayer. I, it, this was like Daniel praying to God for deliverance and the Lord sent his answer but still he didn't really I didn't know that was my answer so yeah. uh, I came home uh, started ministry started the year and going on is normal nobody around me knew how deep in need I was of my husband mm. nobody really the amount of pressure that I had on my shoulders, the amount of things that I had to do on my own, it was very, very, very difficult. And um, nevertheless, there were many guys coming to conferences telling me, oh, the Lord told me you're my wife, you know, that vow that I made to the, to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the enemy comes and tests that constantly. And so many guys was like, oh, no, this girl would be the perfect wife. <laughs> and then I, I felt... Yo, this is not at all my picture of my husband or at all you know the lord is not speaking at all about this but it happened a lot and a lot of ladies had this desire to make to you know thought their son was, was my husband and it was just very very frustrating <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it was just very frustrating. And so the last thing that I wanted was somebody coming to me telling me the Lord told me you're my wife. Yeah. <laughs> because I would have just said, listen, Tata, it's not this. <laughs> and um, okay, so I went home and uh, started started ministry and just trusting the Lord. And on the 29th of uh, January, I had a conference in Pretoria. And uh, that was the conference that Chris do attended and even in that conference you know with him sitting in the crowd I didn't feel anything the Lord didn't speak to me he didn't prepare me he didn't whisper in my ear your husband is near I wish he did and he usually does so I was quite frustrated that he didn't you know he didn't um tell me oh behold there is your husband he didn't um give me any scripture he didn't he didn't speak at all about him I just did the teaching. Um, Krista was in the in the conference. At the end of it, we'll share the story later. But at the end of it, you know, he helped me with something that was wrong with my car. I also didn't think anything about it. Went home, slept, had a dream. And I was like, okay, maybe this is my husband. <laughs> so um, the second part of, of our testimony is going to be that whole process from meeting each other being prepared, being refined, being purified for seven years. Mm -hmm. And my journey was seven years and his journey was seven years to the day, seven years. You yeah. know, when I asked the Lord, I want you to provide a ring for this covenant. I never, ever once thought that it would be seven years waiting for the Lord to provide it. So um, our both of our journeys was very lengthy, um, but we were prepared in the to the day depths of it we were really taken through fire over fire through fire again and being purified more than we could have ever thought possible mm -hmm. and um, I remember a year almost a year before I met Christo I sat and I was just praying to the Lord and asking him okay when is my husband gonna come and you know I think I'm ready I was ready when I was 18 to get married in my opinion already so I mean my time is ticking and I, I, I had this fear in me that everybody was taken already where am I gonna get my husband so I, I was in prayer and the Lord showed me a vision and um, all of you know already my my testimony about being prepared as Esther, which a lot of it is has a part to play with me meeting my husband, but a lot of it is also for the body of Christ and for the ministry that I'm in. So it's two sided. It's it's my personal life being prepared for seven years. We got married exactly uh, in the tenth month of the seventh year that we that uh, that the Lord called me, just as Esther met the king in the 10th month of the seventh year mm -hmm. so there's a lot of similarities but in this vision i sat with the lord and i was crying also just weeping and you know everything feels like it's falling apart and he showed me a vision of uh, a perfectly uh a set golden bar a bar of gold so when a when gold is set in a bar it's quite pure you know you're not going to set gold into a bar if it's not purified it's yeah. been through the fire it's been set in a bar ready to be sold to a bank you know it's ready to it's perfect it's mm -hmm. a flawless bar of gold and um, I saw this bar of gold and I was like okay this bar of gold looks fantastic nothing is wrong with it and the Lord started to put that bar of gold into fire and you know, slamming it with a an hammer and taking it through pruning and cutting pieces of gold away from that bar. And it was in the midst of a very, very heated, hot fire. Mm -hmm. And that year of my life was also the deepest fire that I had to go through in anything of my life. The year before I met Christu was, and also in his life, it was the deepest fire that both of us had to go through his story is now different than mine but uh you know i've been through purification fires but this fire was much more than that so i got this vision just before that fire season started 
And it was a perfectly golden bar going through very deep fire. And I saw that gold starting to drip into liquid gold. Mm -hmm. And as it dripped into liquid gold, it started to create at the bottom of a very dark, you know, vision, a crown, a gold crown that was made from the finest strands of gold that I could ever imagine. And this golden crown was created out of that golden bar, bar through extreme heat. So mm. much so that only the purest form of the gold made like little, um, uh, um, what is that? Strands. Strands of gold that this golden crown was made out of. Mm. And when I saw that vision, I knew the Lord was going to take me through intense fire. Yeah. But at the end of our season, he would have, he would have um, established and created something within me that only he could do, you know, a level of purity, a level of uh, royalty, a level of, um, yeah, working uh, that only he could do. And mm -hmm. that year was one of the most difficult fire seasons of my life on every single area of my life. I was tested, taken through the fire, pruned, um, yo, it's been character building. The most character building that I've ever had to do was in that year. Mm -hmm. And that season ended, um, that fire season ended just before Christo stepped into my life. I don't know if you want to share a bit about your fire season. Yeah, well, in short. Yeah, um, just shortly. So a year plus minus before I met Lisha. Um, God showed me to quit my job um, and to go to a different, uh, into a different, um, essentially, uh, line of work. Mm -hmm. uh, so, still in engineering, I was in construction and then I went into consultation. Um, and I thought it was good to grow me and so I can... Uh, sharpen my uh, engineering skills further, etc. Um, because, uh, yeah, um, being in a relationship with God, God, God will always take you higher and further and sharpen you more and uh, grow you more um, in yeah. all uh, seasons or at all levels of your life. In all areas. Yeah. So, um, so then I did it, and I it was good for the first. Uh, a few months, but then uh, we uh, started clashing heads, me and my new boss. And yeah, I started um, feeling like uh, the story of uh, David and um, Saul, where Saul uh, tried to victimize David, essentially. And uh, long story short, I worked extreme long hours. Um, I, I, I didn't have time for ministry anymore. I didn't have time for worship anymore. Um, I was literally working myself uh, sick. Um, I got sick every month or second month. And my boss had the, uh, you know, what's the right word, audacity to tell me he's never seen anybody who, who gets sick so often. But I mean, I, he was working me <laughs> hard and sick. Mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, but God was uh, with me through it all. And it was, there was a, a stage in that whole process uh, um, where, again, um, I was um, at a fork where, where I had to choose. Um, am I going to choose God in this process? Or am I just going to give up and turn my back on God? Because that's how I, I felt. I kept on praying for deliverance, for um, just some grace and mercy in this process. Um, I had so much responsibility on my shoulders, so many projects that I had to uh, look after at the same time. And uh, I was going to cry. Um, and in, in that moment in time, um, I chose. I said, God, no matter what I go through, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how tired and how burnt out I feel I'm still going to be faithful to you and your word and the calling you've set me yes I'm frustrated because I'm not getting to my calling I'm not getting to what you've actually called me for which is uh, pure and uh, worship uh, mm -hmm. but I'm still going to um, be obedient to you and um, then God sent me a, a very special mentor into my life um, his name is 
to you. Um, also, we just want to honor, give honor where his honors to you. He's also a mechanical engineer, has his own business, and he helped me through the whole process. He coached me and and, and taught me how to uh, treat specific uh, people, specific uh, personalities, um, and to see uh, further beyond the immediate situation. And um, needless to say, um, I was also threatened with. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, being fired and losing my job. And um, uh, I, I, I also was in a position to fight back and say, listen, um, listen, uh, you know, um, I can actually claim uh, a couple of months salary and take him to court and, you know, for the way he's treated me, um, um, you know, unreasonably in the workspace, et cetera. And um, the word says that we must not take our fellow brothers uh, to court. Um, we must deal, uh, you know, deal with it with um, within um, the body of Christ, and um, so I was faithful, and I did not just like David could, you know, cut off the head of Saul. He did not do it, and mm -hmm. I was faithful. I still respected my boss. I still honored him as my boss, and I still worked for him um, as far as I could reasonably uh, please him, and. Um, so then God um, pulled me through that whole season and uh, sent me the resources I needed, the support I needed. And then till finally um, he gave me an outcome of a new job, um, which uh, the reward was much greater than all the overtime that I worked. Mm -hmm. And um, my, my we, we also parted ways, me and my, my previous boss. Um, we shook hands. We forgave each other. Um, I can still go to him today and have a conversation. Um, you know, there's, uh, I honor him and what he does. We, we just don't see eye to eye on many things. And um, yeah, I, I'm also sure that God pruned him in the whole process as well. Mm -hmm. And um, so I learned it's so many things um, also to grow in my own business. Um, which also prepared me for the current season I am, I am in, which which is I also again resigned from my job, moved down to uh, Mosul Bay uh, with my wife, started my own firm, and God has provided also be, being faithful in that. I'm now um, you know doing my own projects, have my own clients, and again it was a preparation season for where I'm now because I wouldn't have been able to work a nine to five job or eight to five. South Africa um, <laughs> job um, and stay where I am now also looking after the farm which is also part of the calling God has uh, given me so uh, I'm just so grateful you know for God's faithfulness in the whole process you know if I had turned my back on him it would have been detrimental in, in that moment of time I would have most probably taken my boss to court I would, it would have yeah, I cannot just imagine, you know, how detrimental it would have been. And I would have most probably not met my wife. So, um, you know, just before the big breakthrough, mm -hmm. God took me through this heavy, mm -hmm. heavy, intense mm -hmm. spring season. And again, I just want to reiterate, it's not always that, that we have the privilege and the freedom to walk in our calling. Sometimes mm -hmm. God takes you through a season of preparation for your calling. Absolutely. Where you're not busy with your calling, where you're not doing what he has created you for, like John the Baptist um, eating, um, you know, um, at, at, at insects in the desert and being set apart uh, in preparation, <laughs> in preparation, <laughs> locusts, in preparation for his calling. And um, but again, it's a season. Don't uh, get stuck there. <laughs> Please don't get stuck there. Push through and then God will release you into your calling. Yeah, so I just want to uh, finish off that the biggest um, fire and the biggest uh, pruning always happens before the breakthrough. Uh, I've seen it over and over and over in my life when the week has been crazy attack. There is a massive breakthrough that the Lord is busy with. So uh, the enemy also wants to 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 work against that which the God is that which God is preparing. And in my life, um, 
you know, I had to go through a lot of, I, I was pure in my own eyes. I was perfectly pure, ready for, for marriage. You know, I didn't have like a list of sin that I had to overcome. You know, Christo had a different life story, but I didn't have this massive um, strongholds in my life that I had, I had to overcome before the Lord could trust me in a marriage what I had to pray through and to work through was a lot of bloodline curses. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people don't believe in bloodline curses, but goodness, mine was real. And mine, I could see in my life clearly. Mm -hmm. And the effect of it was immense in my life. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to really go deep into cleaning the seed, cleaning our mm -hmm. bloodline you know, praying through so many things that the Lord opened up to me that yeah. was strongholds in my life. Within my purity, it was strongholds yeah. in my life and it caused a, you know, a stumbling block for yeah. me to not, a, a barrier that I couldn't meet my husband. Um, So I had to, do you want to say anything about that? Yeah, just, um, this is also now how special it is uh, to see how God has uh, placed us together. We are completely different in terms of our gifting, in terms of our, <laughs> the way we think. Um, uh, I'm, I'm much more of a teacher, prophet than a mercy. She's a giver and a prophet. Um, so, you know, it's, it's interesting dynamic between us sometimes, <laughs> but it's definitely there to to uh, you know make us like the word says in ecclesiastics uh, two is better than one uh, mm. god is shaping us um to be more effective in the kingdom so i, I would normally put uh you know uh, a teaching to her testament <laughs> <laughs> if i can put it like that he so, put scripture to my visions yes he puts oh, like man. scripture verse and and book to all of the things that I encounter and feel. And, so to help all the, <laughs> all the prophets and teachers out there, um, a little bit uh, a background about bloodline curses. I also thought, you know, Yeshua has paid it all. He's done it all on the cross. Um, his blood was uh, shed for all. But we do have scriptures which might seem uh, a little bit contradicting to that, which uh, John 1 verse 9, which says, um, if we, if we, uh, repent of our sins, then he is faithful and just to remove us from all uh, iniquity. Then the Holy Spirit was sent to the world to convince the world of sin, um, as we read in John 16. So then we get a clearer picture of this, that we have to repent of our sin and the sins of our forefathers. Um, mm -hmm. If you go and read the Ten Commandments, which is, by the way, still applicable to us today, otherwise I can commit adultery. No, yeah. I can't. Sorry, love. I can't. So anyway, so, so that's just how, how extreme that is. If for, for people who think the Ten Commandments aren't applicable to us today, we read also in 2 Timothy 3, 16, the whole scripture was breathed out by God and inspired by God and is there for teaching and for um uh, correction. correction. So and for, for every good work of uh, work of faith. So the whole word is profitable for us and applicable to us. And then Matthew um, uh, 7, where Yeshua also says that I did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. So, and unless you also righteous as the scribes, then uh, you won't go into the kingdom of, of heaven. I.e., if you don't obey the laws, all the laws. If you love me, you'll obey my commandments. So, essentially, the, the, the Ten Commandments also has this key where he says he um, seeks after the iniquities of the fathers up until the third and fourth generation. So we have to go back and repent of the unrepented sin. Um, as per 1 John 9, um, 1 John 1 verse 9. So that's uh, what God showed me in my life, which I also needed to deal with and repent of because the wage of sin is death. And uh, the the wage of sin uh, continues up until the next generation, mm -hmm. and that's essentially what we have to realize when we walk this this life of purification, removing strongholds, um, deliverance, which I mentioned earlier. It's a process, but we do have the Holy Spirit that shows us 
which iniquities we need to repent of. Absolutely. So that really had a big effect in my life. Um, bloodline curses had a massive effect in blocking my husband to come forth. So that was a season that I had to go through to really, really go into uh, the depth of of repentance and cleaning a lot. Of, I've I've gone through repentance a lot. I've you know gone through bloodline things at the age of 14, 15, 16, my whole life. But this was very very specific. Mm. And it was a very specific thing that the enemy had um, placed within my path of my life so that I cannot, um, you know, find my my life mm. covenant partner. <laughs> but um, I think that's a, that's a good idea of what we both had to just go through to prepare us for when we met and what the Lord did after that. And then he did everything Suddenly. Suddenly. I mean, come on. It's, <laughs> we don't even know each other here. We're staying on a farm. We built this recording studio with the help of the Lord. Yeah. And yeah, there's so many things. Um, yeah, we'd like to share with you in the next. And session. so um, the next part of the story was all of the fire lifted, all of the um, persecution and the um purification and the fire just ceased and the lord took us into a season of grace, grace yeah. and rest and beauty and um you know this also is just a season it's just for us becoming one and it's beautiful yeah. uh you know to to talk about it from the moment we met until our marriage that that is going to be our next session uh what the lord did how he did it the detail in what he did um in confirming and really this time you 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 start knowing the difference between the voice of self and the voice of the lord mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times you can you know you can quite well tell yourself oh the lord said this is my husband <laughs> you you're very good at the placebo um, effect <laughs> 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 yes, so just understanding the difference between the voice of the Lord and the voice, your own voice, your own idol, your own heart speaking. And um, that's very powerful to then go into a time of um, really pruning all of those voices away to only hear the voice of the Lord. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to the both of you for sharing your journey and um, also sharing about the fire because I think it's so important. Um, it's easy from the outside to see if, if someone might meet you now, now that you're married and living on the farm and in this season of grace and joy and just enjoying each other and enjoying each other in Abba, it's easy to think that it has always been that way or it's easy for someone to feel alone in their journey because they are not at that point yet. So thank you for sharing this out of obedience and for encouraging um, all of Abba's children really in their journey to finding their spouse, to finding their covenant partner in him, that it takes, it, it's a process. It takes pruning, it takes persistence, it takes obedience, it takes faith, it takes um, going through fire takes really persevering through everything that he is taking you through to become the person that you need to be once you stand in front of the other person, once you, you drink from that cup. So thank you very much to the both of you. And we are very excited to hear part three of this amazing journey. Part three is definitely going to be the most exciting, <laughs> the most rewarding. Um. Yeah. I we we would have loved to give part three first, but uh, it's it's important to start with the process. Yes. Yeah. There's um, so many times, you know, when people see us, they're like, "You're so blessed to be able to just receive all of this." Yeah. And we just give a smile and say, "The Lord knows." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go through to this point. Be careful. <laughs> be careful how you um judge other people mm -hmm. in their season because yeah. you have no idea what they do. Mm -hmm. you have no idea what it takes for the lord to get to a level of trusting a person that much mm -hmm. to be able to release the, a certain amount of responsibility in ministry in their lives mm -hmm. in what they're governing uh the lord is not going to release godly um 
uh, responsibilities. responsibilities to you if you if you can't be trusted. So I, I just want to I just feel like saying this, that there's a lot of people who have a, um, a judgment on a, a person or whoever it might be on your, you know, they're just lucky. They have, <laughs> they just have an easy life. Mm-hmm. Um, or whatever the case may be, just be very, very, very careful because you have no idea what people had to go through in their life um, for the Lord to, to trust them with certain things. And usually it, all of the people that I've spoken to who are doing massive things in the kingdom, who are doing massive callings, went through a season more than once continuous season and i my prayer is the following that the season of the fire would never end i really pray that the lord would keep me in the face of the fire in the midst of the fire because that is where i'm closest to him Mm -hmm. um so every person who has a lot that they steward a lot that they carry who has a, a big anointing had to go through immense mm. pruning yes like paul said the mark of a true apostle are the scars <clears throat> so that's really important that like i've mentioned before timothy also said if you desire a godly life you will suffer persecution mm. <clears throat> so it's not zero to hero <laughs> it's a process of god testing your faithfulness mm-hmm. uh, which is not easy but it's so worth it but then again the reward that that Mm. the father gives after going through that fire is so um it it transcends all the suffering and all the difficult times and pruning it's it's just so much more rewarding and lisha i gave you a scripture the first time we had a call and this is the scripture that the lord gave me just before christo came Mm. and um you know the the scriptures in in uh, songs of solomon eight and it's it's where the uh, the the writer says who is this one leaning on her beloved emerging out of the desert coming forth out of the desert and then there's this a part and i'm going to paraphrase please don't quote me on this but yeah you know, i like to paraphrase scripture crystal loves to exactly say scripture but um, then there's a part where it says um where where she speaks about the consuming fire and i would actually love to read this i wonder if i have my bible here yeah let's read it this is profound where she speaks about the fire and would you go to the passion translation Mm -hmm. and um it's songs of solomon 8 8. and uh, she speaks about how She's captured in this fire through his love and it's a consuming fire and she's given so many sacrifices. She's paid a high, very high price. And at the end, the Lord says the following. It says, um, the reward would be so big that your sacrifice wouldn't be like a sacrifice anymore. Your uh, suffering wouldn't even be a measure to the amount of the reward that would be brought for you for that little piece of of suffering that you had to go through. So it is the following scripture, Songs of Solomon 8. Okay, I'm just going to read from here. So it says, But now I have grown and become a bride, and my love for him has made me a tower of passion and contentment for my beloved. I am now a firm wall of protection for others, guarding them from harm. And this is what I feel like. (laughs) You know, anybody, I'm very quick to just protect people in ministry, protecting people who I see is going off of the the rails, going off of the track. I would always step in and just, you know, either be just an intercessor for them or share some of my wisdom that I have over the years in you're going to make a big mistake, please just come onto the right path again. So um, anyways, to be a firm wall of protection for others, guarding them from harm. This is how he sees me. I am the one who brings him bliss, finding favor in his eyes. My bridegroom king has a vineyard of love made from a multitude of followers. His caretakers of this vineyard have given my beloved their best. I give all the glory to you and I will give double honor to those who serve my beloved and have watched over my soul. 
my beloved with one in uh, my beloved one with me in my garden how marvelous that my friends the brides to be now hear your voice and song let me hear it again arise my darling come Quickly, my beloved, come be the grateful gazelle with me. Come be like a young stag with me. Okay, sorry, this is not the scripture. Here it is. I'm so sorry, but maybe I had to read that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Songs of Solomon 8 verse 5. <laughs> Who, I just read the end. Who is this one? She arises out of her desert, clinging to her beloved. When I awakened you under the apple tree, as you were feasting upon me, I awakened your innermost being with the travail of birth, as you longed for more of me. Fasten me upon your heart as a seal of, of fire forevermore. So this is so important. He is a seal of fire forevermore. Sure. Pray that you would always be kept always be kept within his fire because his face precedes the fire. This living, consuming flame will fill you as my prisoner of love. My passion is stronger than the chains of death and of the grave. All consuming at the very flashes of fire from the burning heart of God, Place this fierce, unrelenting fire over your entire being. Rivers of pain and persecution will never extinguish this flame. Endless floods will be unable to quench this raging fire that burns within you. Everything, everything will be consumed and it will stop at nothing as you yield everything to his furious fire until it won't even seem to you like a sacrifice anymore. And so that part is for me the most important. He says, as you surrender, as you sacrifice everything, I mean, we sacrifice a little piece and then the Lord takes all of the rest and we feel like, yo, there's nothing left of me. He says, it won't even seem to you like a sacrifice anymore. And just before I met Christo, the Lord gave me the scripture and he made a promise to me. He made me a promise and he said, the, the fire you went through and that which you sacrificed, it would be nothing, nothing in comparison to what I will do and what I will bring the reward for. Mm -hmm. So praise for the fire, love him in the fire, uh, surrender to the fire and he will bring forth something that you would never have even mm -hmm. dreamed of that you would never have ever thought would be possible. Mm -hmm. He gives more abundantly than you can ever yeah. ask or think mm -hmm. to ask him. As the scripture says, God is an all consuming fire. Mm -hmm. So he wants to consume all of us and yeah. burn away all the sin and iniquities and purifies fires and cleanses us. Mm -hmm. And when I look back at this time in my life, I would have easily given that sacrifice to get to marry Christa again. <laughs> so, you know, for me, it seems like nothing in comparison to what, what he has given. So I would have easily, easily gone through the whole journey again. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks to the both of you. Um, while you were talking, um, the scripture, Romans 8 verse 18 um, I also paraphrase it always, but um, just a short, just in short, the number um, um, 818 is a number that my husband always received um, as confirm confirmation from Abba Father whenever he went through tough circumstances and tough times. And it's so weird, but when we got married, he stopped getting 818 and I started getting it all the time. Um, <laughs> So that's really weird, but um, yeah, it's just also always an encouragement for me to know that um, what you are going through now is nothing, nothing compared to what is coming. So I just want to read it quickly um, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the esteem that is to be revealed to us. So the glory that our father will reveal to us is nothing compared to the circumstances we go through right now. 
So thanks Great. for confirming that to us as well today, the both of you. <laughs> <laughs> and I just like to add in there, this is what I normally tell people who are still in the world, still caught up with the pleasures of the world. I always say this, you know, Satan doesn't play fair. Mm -hmm. So when you're in his camp, you can be assured that he will kill you some other way. When you're in God's camp or in Satan's camp, i.e. God's camp or the world, both journeys will be difficult. Both journeys will feel unfair. But I, it's much more rewarding to be in God's camp because mm -hmm. it will always promise life, life forevermore. It has everlasting effects. Uh, effects. Mm -hmm. And like we've just said, no sacrifice, no, no sacrifice of obedience, of uh, you know pressing through difficult times will be, uh, even be able to be compared to the glory and the reward that will be given to us. So there's actually not even, uh, you know, a comparison between serving God and serving the enemy of the world. Well, you can either serve God or you serve the enemy. There's, there's no in between. Yes. You know, so if you serve the Lord, then everything in your life that is difficult will lead to something fruitful, will fruitful lead to life. And eternal. And if you don't, then it's just going to go deeper and deeper into death. Yes. So that's. That's basically what we're trying to say, that um, if you are facing much suffering in your walk with the Lord, be um, encouraged that that is producing an eternal reward. Uh, reward. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, yeah, we are excited for part three and yeah, may you have a blessed evening. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your time, Lucia. Mm -hmm. And we really pray God's blessing for you and your husband. Thank and you. we look forward to the next session. Thank you. May you be blessed as well. Bye. Bye Thank bye. you. Bye bye. <laughs>